Moving on, I have some interesting things to say on Twitter. Oh, I have some interesting things. That sounds a bit um, um, self congratulatory self congratulatory, and also like I'm sucking my own pee pee. But I thought when I saw this news on Hypebeast that I was maybe the only person who kind of had these reservations. And I guess maybe in general, when it comes to streetwear stuff, when it comes to scene stuff, because it's all because it's kind of partly about how good you are and about how hardworking you are and about how resilient you are. It is also a game of like who you know right and who you're friends with because that kind of helps in terms of allowing you to kind of network with the right people get brought in with the, to, to the right spaces to be even even to be able to even to be even given a chance to display your talents because i know like myself i know for myself sorry rewind that i had a really hard time kind of breaking in because when i first started i was quite i wouldn't say abrasive but i was pretty hell bent on annoying people i would say maybe because it's the i was just young and i thought i knew everything um i thought i deserved to fucking be tinker hatfield straight away i thought i deserved to be fraser cook straight away you know those kind of dumb things that you think in your head right and uh, when you're like 19 you think you know everything you, you think you can solve all the issues and whatnot when clearly there's issues a bit way bigger than what my level of understanding was but there's also a kind of annoyance that i felt that there was this real big there was this over <sighs> There was an overemphasis placed, I felt like, on who you knew. And it was too annoying to me because I knew that I couldn't play that game. So for me, the annoying part was that I can't play that game because it's just not in my personality to be like a suck up or to be like fake friends with people. I just don't have it in me, unfortunately, for myself. I don't take that as a credit and make myself think I'm bitter than anyone. I just can't do it. I always thought it was disappointed because at the end of the day, that's not the most important aspect. You would imagine being actually good at what you do, being hard work and having some form of resilience should be the way forward, right, in that kind of field. But sometimes if you just network correctly, you can put yourself in a position that you don't necessarily deserve and then work up to some sort of good enough level. So I guess because of that, people tend to not really share their opinions or really say what they actually feel about things. But obviously, still, people kind of vote with their wallets, vote with their feet. And for the most part, whatever we're thinking, even behind closed doors, it kind of gets relayed in the open market. I mean, there's no hiding from that. But then when I saw this news, I was kind of a little bit like, grossed out and disappointed i'm not going to be i'm not going to be um i'm not going to lie about this so this is courtesy of a uh, hype beast it says the following tremaine emery teases the return of pyrex vision the resurrection ablo caravaggio tears now if you're familiar with um, virgil ablo law r.i.p the great you would know that pyrex vision was virgil ablo's first dilly dance or first dipping of his toes into fashion or into streetwear let's say streetwear first of all and then he kind of led into into fashion but effectively, this is the first brand that he launched that caused a real big stir in the streetwear community. I think this was the brand that effectively made Virgil Abloh the, um, the kind of uh, de facto enemy of the scene for the most part. I remember speaking to a lot of people when I was working at the place I was at before where I sort of met Virgil briefly when I was doing that online streetwear course. And I was speaking to kind of, and this was kind of like after he kind of stopped doing this and was kind of launching into his fashion brand that he did off-white and stuff for the first few seasons. Part of the reason why a lot of these other streetwear big dogs who kind of then went out of their way to suck up to him when he was really successful at Louis Vuitton, why they were saying no to him to be part of the course that I was trying to get them involved in to be mentors was because of the Pirates vision. They felt a Pirates vision went against everything to do with streetwear. It was priced really high. Um, the inspiration from it was maybe a little bit, I don't know, surface level. I don't know what, what people thought, maybe the name. I don't know. But people just didn't like what he did there. They didn't like how he put it together. And I think maybe the rugby flannels also kind of rubbed people up the wrong way. The fact that he went and bought all these rugby flannels that were like 60 to, I think, 60 bucks or something like that, I think he said in the interview. Um, he basically, um, he basically dead stock. No, he basically bought them whatever that was left so that they weren't anymore because I guess they weren't reissuing with whatever that was left on the racks and then he printed the pirate version on the back of the 23 and then sold them for $600 right and this is also maybe the time that he was kind of being a bit of a troll online and attacking people saying you know fashion is um what do you say um designs a fresher scam or something you know he was just being a little bit of a troll and being a little bit anti being a little bit counterculture right and also just kicking up a fuss which you should do I mean, in a streetwear brand you should be making t-shirts that say pharrell can't skate and kind of winding people up a little bit do you know what i mean that's what that's the kind of name of the game i think a little bit especially when you're starting to kind of cause a bit of a stir that being said the brand obviously got um if i remember the name was the name of the brand as well who was that was that asap torvi was that asap nas i gave the name i don't know but there was some sort of so whoever started the name wasn't um, uh, Virgil I think they gave him this name for that right or was it Off-White 
whatever it was, doesn't matter. Pyrex Vision, he did it for a bit. He had to stop it because the brand, the manufacturer Pyrex ended up, you know, um, sending him a cease and desist or maybe threatening to sue. And then that's when he shifted into Off-White. And then, you know, the rest is history. But me personally, I just think um, teasing a return of Pyrex Vision under the moniker of Dunning Tears from Tremaine Emery, I just think is a bit distasteful. That's just my own personal opinion. Now, there could be more to this story. And the fact that Virgil Abloh and um, Tremaine were clearly very close friends. They clearly were very close collaborators. Um, and there's clearly more to their story that I don't actually know because I was never around them, those guys a lot. I maybe saw them together maybe once or twice, if that. So cool, understandable. But I just think the fact that this guy hasn't been dead yet for a year yet. It's not even been a year since Virgil Abloh untimely passing, right? Um, the passing that touched a lot of people within you know streetwear within fashion within the wider community within culture overall and the fact that he was kind of like just about to start get into his um, bag in terms of you know his creative output and his work and his projects and stuff it was a real shame that he was that he passed in the way that he passed especially because no one knew that he was going through his health difficulties so all that kind of baggage around it the fact that he was going through that tumultuous time just before he passed where he was getting a little bit you know, he was kind of getting cancelled online for the whole Black Lives Matter stuff. And there's a lot of kind of bent up emotion there. And then, of course, the criticism he was getting from fashion people and, you know, not really recognising his work or not really wanting to give him his flowers while he's around. So there's a lot of kind of raw emotions around it, I think. Again, this is from a, somebody that worked with him very briefly, like a small drop of working, not even anything close to what these guys have done. But even I felt that in terms of like, damn, and I remember being like one of the main guys who was like, I would say main guy champion about one of the people that was sort of like champion and champion his name and also kind of saying hey he deserves to be in these kind of conversations that they're putting him in even if you don't like his work I still think he deserves to be in those kind of conversations to the point where if I'm not mistaken that role that I actually took on to be part to be like the co-producer of that online streetwear course the whole reason why I applied to that company is because I got told by a little birdie that he was actually going to be the lead tutor so I kind of wanted to do that course knowing full well the contacts that I have the knowledge that I have at the scene that I'll be able to be a great resource and kind of plug some holes in terms of getting some cool people involved but also that I get the opportunity to work next to this guy who had this even at the time I thought was a crazy output right his output was insane it went against everything that I kind of I kind of was not taught but sort of kind of learned but I was the most assistant streetwear on the scene where you don't really you know show your work um, you always show pdf and line sheets of stuff that you're thinking of doing you never ship stuff um, you never put your money where your mouth is. There's a little kind of, kind of stuff, right? You took a big game, but then Virgil just came in and just started dumping, like, boom, boom, one after the other, like, project, 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 sell, up, sell, up, sell. Like, he just didn't stop, and that eventually got him where he was, you know, before he passed. So, I'm as invested in this story as anybody because I was a fan, do you know what I mean? And I still am a fan to this day. I still, for, you know, for the most part, when I'm about to do a creative project, I love to put on the old Virgil Abloh interview in the background and just listen to it as I'm doing my thing. It's just something I like to do. But I just think this is quite distasteful, my own opinion. Now, there could be more to this story. I'm sure, you know, they've gotten permission for this. You know, we're looking on the screen now, our flannel kind of taking, you know, a bit of a nod to what Virgil did beforehand that says Pyrex with number 45, which is meant to be a nod to Jordan, his return back to the game. He said number 45 and then of course, you know, the original shirt had 23 on it. So there's that link and then the tears at the bottom and the name itself is pretty cool. If you just think about it on the surface level, Pyrex tears, I think that's a pretty cool name, but I just think it's distasteful and I'm not really a fan of it at all in the slightest. Um, I just think the guy hasn't passed, you know, his passing hasn't been long enough for those kind of things to go about. I know most likely he did get permission from the estate to do this for sure. They're way more closer to Virgil Abloh's, you know, late wife and children and family members than I would ever be. So if they say it's fine, then it's fine. But I think as a fan, um, you're allowed to maybe raise your concerns and say, I just don't like post, what is, how, how do you pronounce it? Is it post homus, right? Post homus releases. I just hate them. I think Prince was a big, um, Prince also agreed with that kind of notion that he was never a fan of it. And then in the end, they ended up kind of going against his wishes and trying their best to kind of tarnish his legacy by bringing out as many releases as possible after he passed. And I look at people like, you know, Jean-Michel Basquiat and his legacy and how it's been, I think, somewhat ruined because of the licensing that was, you know, done to his work and his likeness. I look at the stuff with like Keith Herring and the amount of crappy you see out there with people wearing. I look at the stuff I leaving at some like a Piet Mondrian. Some, the other day I saw some girl at some tech house 
party I went to wearing a jacket that, you know, some Piet Mondrian S kind of jacket. And I was like, does she even know, like, again, not in a kind of like, oh, do you listen to metal sort of stuff, but come on, do you even know who this artist is? And his branch has been cheapened by some bomber jacket you can buy in Primark. I just, this is what you don't want to see. And I don't know if this would be maybe an agreement they already had. Maybe this is kind of one of Virgil's kind of last hurrahs in terms of like, you know, you would never think I'd be into this sort of stuff, but here I am saying, no, you know, take my stuff, rip it, make as many copies as you want, you know, make your own tributes. I don't care, you know, because at the end of the day, his name is still ringing off the back of this, but I just think in terms of tact and stuff, I wouldn't personally like this for myself. No, I personally just don't like it from afar. Um, I just think it's a little bit, it's a little bit gross for me personally. Um, but again, who knows this, I could be proven wrong. This whole thing could be tied to a project that is tied to some sort of, um, community outreach thing it could be going to unrepresented communities it could be you know something that kind of leads to a bigger project that kind of touches more people and inspires more people i don't know i'm sure there's more to it but if you're just going to put out two posts that i see now on the screen one of them features an up close picture of a hoodie with a, a picture from of caravaggio here that's been enlarged to cover the whole entire front and then you've got another picture, of course, with the back of the flannel and not give any more information than the resurrection, Abla Cavaggio Tears, and you've got returning with the 45. If you're going to be that vague, I just have to assume, I just have to interpret what I see on the screen. And from what I see on the screen, I don't like it. It could be, again, I'm sure, because the Tremaine guy seems to be a fairly level-headed, rational considerate compassionate type of dude i'm sure this isn't done with any sort of malice so it's not a criticism on the guy at all and from the times i've met him he's only been nice courteous and you know good natured despite some of the people that he hangs around with being absolute cunts <laughs> do you know what i mean he's always been really really nice it's just i just don't like this this thing alone and i'm and i think it's cool to say you don't like it without it kind of coming across that you're gonna ruffle some feathers or people are not gonna be happy and it's gonna you know tarnish your name and shit that's just a bit lame i mean if my work is good my work is good it shouldn't matter that i didn't like a shirt but i just don't like this collaboration i just think it's a little bit tasteless for me personally but maybe i'm in the minority so i'd like to know what you guys think in the comments down below um let me know what you think do you think the pyrex tears number 45 the resurrection of pyrex vision version of those first kind of dip into the kind of streetwear scene this resurrection that Tremaine is doing from Dead in Tears, do you think it's actually, do you think it's tasteful? Do you think it honors his legacy? Um, and maybe I'm talking completely out of my ass and I don't know what I'm talking about. Let me know in the comments. What is what they're saying here? And Hypebeast comments are not the best comments to kind of, you know, glean on because they're usually overly negative. But let's see what they say here. Because I haven't actually read them. What they say? The Hypebeast comments is the following. Recycle the dead, milk the dead with 16 upvotes. And then the comment that replies and it said, nothing like making money off your homie that just died less than eight months ago. Yeesh. Okay, I didn't put it that harshly, but hey. Another person says here, the term turning in his grave doesn't apply to Virgil. The guy's been turning so much, it's more like a washing machine. Ouch. Another one says, my guy discovered basic ass Caravaggio and thought it made him a creative clownery. Now at the time, at the time though, when Virgil did the Caravaggio hoodie, it was pretty cool. I remember seeing it. I remember seeing the, the, the that shoot that they did with ASAP Mob and the whole video around it was really cool. Let's not lie. That whole fashion film thing that he created with them was brilliant. I thought the hoodie was really sick and I thought the t-shirt was sick and the shorts. I liked everything about that. And I remember seeing the performance of, was it ASAP Rocky? I don't know what he was performing. This not not what he's wearing. It was like a it was like an old one when the when it first dropped. I think he was wearing the all white ones. I wasn't even maybe available for sale. I'm not too sure. It was a white one. Maybe it had white font, and I thought that looked disgustingly good. So that was pretty sick at the time. But maybe now it's a little bit um, lame because everybody essentially copied what Virgil did. That's the irony of it. It's been done so often that kind of like you know, um, what was the artist that I like that did that sort of similar painting? Uh, Bronzino, right? There's another guy too who I was really liking at the time when I was doing art in school who did the similar sort of, uh, you know, Passion of the Christ kind of style paintings called Bronzino who had a really good painting that I was kind of thinking I put on the shirt when Virgil dropped this and that was, that was kind of forward thinking but now maybe it's a little bit, you know, a little bit lame. So I kind of get that but I think, you know, the guy created it first so he can, you know, whatever, recycle it if he wants. Um, 
And Abbott said, now you're tripping. This is great tribute to Virgil, the 23 to the 45. Nice, cool. Someone likes it there. Another person says, this ain't Pyrex. This is just Virgil's homie getting approval from Virgil's estate to stamp his name and collect a paycheck, which is kind of like a backhanded compliment, isn't it? <laughs> a little bit. Another person here says, nah, buddy. Another person says, nobody asks for this. Another person says, for grave rot. <laughs> oh, this is pretty brutal. Another person puts in, in quotation marks, for grave rolling. Another person says here, I feel like, play pray for paris needs to be re-released so yeah so I'm pretty you know com most of the comments are kind of going against it what he's trying to do i'm sure his instagram comments are more positive because they're all his friends so that's nice you're kind of going to get some nice praise that way but for me i'm just not a fan of it but i'd like to know what you guys think in the comments down below let me know let me know